outside agency come in, having the availability of physical therapy, occupational therapy, and nursing on site there with us allows us to intervene before you get to the point that you have to be hospitalized and then go into a nursing home. So again, it's putting other layers in place. If you're at home alone and these things start happening to you, typically nothing's going to happen until it gets to the point, the severity, that you're now admitted to the hospital. You have a major issue. Once you get into the hospital, now your, your choices are somewhat limited, unfortunately, because depending on how long you've waited to go to the doctor or to get to the hospital, how debilitated you are now at that point, you're not making the choice now. The case manager in the hospital is making the choice for you as to where you're going to go. So another thing to keep in mind when you're considering assisted living, make these decisions while you're still in control. Take a look around, see what's out there, do some investigating, pick where you want to live. If for some reason you do go into a hospital, you can then say to the case manager, I've been to Christopher Heights, I, I, you know, this, this is where I want to go, please make a phone call, make a referral. This is what often happens, unfortunately, people go from home to nursing home. Your primary care physicians often forget the middle layer, the transition layer of <coughs> assisted living. Physicians are very focused on one part of you and one part of you only, and that's how are you physically functioning and where are you going to be safe. From a physician's standpoint, if you're not at home, for your generation, for elderly people, the safest place is to be in a nursing home. They don't understand how much we can do in assisted living and how much we can help you and really improve your quality of life and keep you functionally, functioning rather independently. So you really need to, you need to be educated, you need to know what's out there, you need, while you have the control, take that control, start making these decisions, think about where you, where you want to live, because you, ultimately people don't want to live in a nursing home, and if you go into the hospital, it could happen that the case manager discharges you to a nursing home, and you may never come out, because if you don't regain everything again, if the option is to just go home, you may not end up going anywhere other than the nursing home. So it's very important to really understand, understand what's out there. We talk a little bit about what we do provide in assisted living, and you'll see here Lifeline, which I talked about earlier. So in most assisted living facilities, what you have, what we have at Christopher Heights is we have a call light system. There's a call light in your bathroom, number one place where you're going to fall, correct? You might have a problem in the shower. You may get dizzy, it may not even be a fall. You may just not feel well. Again, if you're in assisted living versus at home, if you pull that call light, you're gonna have somebody in there with you right away. Or you may already have someone in there with you assisting. We will assist you with bathing, with dressing, what's referred to as ADLs, which is activities of daily living. Assisted living will help provide you all of that care that you need. And you can pick and choose. What you, the lifeline comes into play is if you're outside of the building on our grounds or if you're somewhere public in our building and you have a fall or even if you just don't feel well, you push lifeline, the phone call comes to our staff first. So then our staff can get to you right away. So rather than pushing lifeline at home, what happens? You get the fire department, you get the police department, you get half the town of Grafton coming in to help you. <laughs> you don't need half the town of Grafton. You need a caring person to come in to calm you down, to assess what your situation is and whether or not you need to go to the hospital. Nine times out of 10 when our residents push lifeline or the call lights in their apartments, they don't have to go to the hospital. They may just need some assistance. They may be dizzy, they may be nauseous, they may have forgotten to take a medication. You know, they just, they may be nervous. They may be afraid. You can pull, you can pull the emergency call light in assisted living for anything. If you're lonely at two o'clock in the morning and you want somebody to come sit with you, 
then you pull that light. So we have one in the bedroom, we have one in the bathroom, and again, it's always the option to get Lifeline. And I'm, I won't get into all the details of how Lifeline is, is paid for, but if you are on MassHealth, MassHealth does cover Lifeline. If you're on SCO, which is a senior care organization, and, and that's a whole other subject, they pay for it as well. So, so there are lots of options. But the, the point being, there are lots of safety nets. So you still have your freedom, you still have your independence, but you have all of these extra care steps in place to keep you independent. We have activities every day. So we start the day at Christopher Heights with exercise. We have an exercise program every morning. It helps keep you going, it helps wake you up. It, again, if you're at home, chances are you're not gonna turn on the TV and do an exercise program every day. What's the motivation? Here you have the motivation to be with your friends to do an exercise program. We have bingo, we have outings, we go to the brown bag series at Mechanics Hall. We go to the Webster House, we go to whatever, you, know, you tell us where you wanna go for restaurants and we'll make those arrangements. We go to Target so you can go shopping or Walmart. So, but every single day there are activities throughout the day that again motivate you to come out of your apartment to keep you feeling good about yourself, to keep you independent. But by for, the way, if you want to stay in your apartment, is anybody going to get mad at you? Absolutely not, apartment? no. No one's yelling at you. No, right? it's always a choice. And we do have some people, again, that still drive, that like the safety of knowing there's someone there all the time, may not necessarily be interested in bingo. Not everybody wants to play bingo. They may be interested in the brown bag series. They may not be interested in any activity at all, however, it's available there. We will let you know when it's going on, but it certainly is not mandatory. It's, a, it's an option, it's a choice for you to make. And we try to tailor it to the population that we have there. So we always encourage people, let us know what you want to do. You know, we have men's group. We have, a, we have 17 men that live with us, and we have just a men's group where the men get a special steak dinner and get together once a month, and they, and they have a great time. So, again, it's always tailored to what the population is at that time. Housekeeping is done for you. You don't have to worry about dusting or vacuuming or cleaning your bathrooms anymore. The housekeeping is done for you. This is all included in what you're paying. You're not going to be charged extra for that. So you no longer have to be sitting on your couch and looking at the dusty table that you really don't have the energy to do right now. Your hands hurt, your knees hurt, you really, you know, you can't stand looking at it, but you really don't have the strength to get up and clean it. So the housekeeping is now all done for you. And again, the independence. You're making your own choices in assisted living. This is the key. You have the three meals a day are provided for you. Your housekeeping is done for you. Your day is yours. You can plan your day as you see fit. You can stay in your apartment all day long. Some people love to read all day long. We do ask that you come out for meals so that we can check on you and make sure you're okay. But you have choices throughout the rest of the day after, you know, at that point. Again, as I spoke about earlier, assisted living being a, being a transition step. Again, the goal is to keep you as independent and po as possible, and this is where I can't emphasize enough, educate yourself as to what's out there between home and nursing home, because there are options, and your generation really relies on your primary care physicians. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful way that you look at them and you, you really believe that they're gods. <laughs> well, unfortunately, healthcare is changing and you have to be advocates for yourself, especially if you don't have family members that are local. You really do need to educate yourself and make sure you know when you go to the primary care physician and he says to you, you know what, Mary, I'm not feeling that you're really safe at home. You've lost 20 pounds. I don't think you're eating. Your blood pressure's up. You haven't been taking your lisinopril. Um, your skin doesn't look good. I think you're dehydrated, et cetera. When he starts pointing these things out to you, he's automatically going to say to your family member that lives in Texas that hasn't seen you, Hi, Mom needs to go to the nursing home. She's got failure to thrive. Okay? She doesn't need to go to the nursing home. You don't need to be at the nursing home. You can go to assisted living. We have a med management program, so we're going to come in. We're going to let you know when it's time to take your medications. So we're going to be able to pro provide that consistency for you. Again, nutritionally, you're going to get your three meals a day, and we're going to make sure that you're having them. So you're not going to have the issues with the dehydration and your skin not looking good. And if you're losing weight, we're going to be on top of that. We take your weights. We're going to be checking these things. 
So again, there's no need to take a leap from home to nursing home when assisted living is such a viable option for you to really enjoy your life. And people stay in assisted, I mean, I've had people in assisted living for nine years, 10 years. I had a woman that was with me until she was 102 and she went to Foxwood six months before she passed away. <laughs> I mean, this, please keep in mind that in assisted living, there's a lot of life. There's a lot of life. There's nothing that makes me happier than when I come in in the morning and I walk into the pub area and there's a group of residents sitting there playing cards. And they are just laughing and having such a wonderful time. You have a lot of life left, but put those safety nets in place so that you can enjoy it and you don't have someone else making the decision for you and saying, you've got to go to the nursing home or your son and daughter who's living miles and miles away saying, you need to go to the nursing home, you're not safe at home anymore. Sherry, can you give me just people, from your from yeah. your experience, what percent of the people that are in a, that you are in assisted living transition from there into a nursing home for a full, full time into the nursing home, as opposed to they live out their lives in the nursing home, or, they, you know, or, or excuse me, they live out their lives in assisted living? I would probably say that ultimately 75% will end up in a nursing home for a short period of time. But you bring me to another point of another option that you have in, a, in assisted living, which is becoming more popular now. Of course, keeping in mind that assisted livings haven't been around all that long, so we're still kind of transitioning into this. You can live your entire life in an assisted living, even if you have a terminal illness and you're on hospice. We welcome hospice to come into our assisted living. When you come and live with us, this is now your home. This is your house. So if you choose to live in your house until the end of your life, there are support services that can be put into place to keep you there, including hospice. And it has worked beautifully. So I would like to see those percentages go down. Right. But it's, it's right. part of the problem. There is a cost that's involved with that because um, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs is our governing board, okay? Nursing homes are governed by the Department of Public Health. We have the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, which is our certification board. So what they do is once a year they come out, they make sure that we're meeting their regulations and guidelines and we're providing the care that we have told you we are going to provide to you. There are some limitations that the Executive of Office, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs puts on us. We are not allowed to manage your oxygen. We are also not allowed to give you injections. However, outside agencies can come in and do that. In addition to that, we're limited as to how much nursing care we can provide to you. And essentially, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs is doing this to make sure that we are not keeping you longer than we should be or in an unsafe situation. 